Why the hell did I get married? Because you're awesome and you oh. love me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Allow us to reintroduce ourselves. I'm Robert Sawyer. And I'm Mrs. Sawyer. And together we are the, the only, only black, black kids, kids in, in the, the class. class. Good job. <laughs> now, why the hell did you get married? Oh, well, because you're an awesome guy. Hmm. <laughs> I love us. Facts. That's why. <laughs> Factual information. Okay. Yeah. Do you know why I'm asking? Because it's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> the setups. <laughs> we didn't. We did. We do not practice beforehand. Okay. I either make a theme or I don't. And uh -huh. she finds out once the camera is on. You know, practice. We don't got time for all that. No. So today's episode is relationships. No happy stories on this one. I'm sad to hear that, but I was listening to, you know, my favorite podcast recently is the Trevor Noah, What Now, right? And funny enough, the episode that I was listening to was talking about relationships, and it was about this book that I haven't read the book, so now I'm, like, intrigued to read the book, but from the podcast, it's talking about... So you're just not going to say the name of the book? I don't remember the name of the book. You already knew that. You're just going to put it... They, they don't... I don't know the name. Well, they they gotta, don't know they the gotta name. They got to listen to the Trevor Noah podcast. I don't so you're know. telling them, stop listening to us right now. Go listen no. to this dude. No. I'll, I'll talk about the book later. We don't have to talk about the book because I haven't read the book. So I don't, the, the book might be trash. It'd it be your own podcast. people, bro. I don't it's, know anything about the book. It's really your own people. I don't know anything about the book. Oh, okay. So, but they were talking about relationships and this friend relationship how it's not like it doesn't get the recognition as like a spousal relationship and i was talking about like how much weight you're putting on this one person and you're forcing your married partner like your partner in marriage to be your best friend and all of these things and so i started like thinking about it and like you're my best friend but there's like things there that like like is friends that it's not all like you're my number one, but not my only one, kind of thing. Does that make sense? I could chop that up and make it sound crazy. <laughs> so no, it was like so. I don't have to do everything with you, only you, and you have to like appeal. Like you have to be that one person for me in my life, kind of thing, basically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So like we do like most things together. We do a lot of things together. Yeah. But then I do enjoy going out with other people for other experiences, not to say that I dislike doing those things with you, right? Like, I know you'll go to Target with me, but you're not like my Target bud. <laughs> who's, you, you don't have a Target bud. Your Target bud is yourself <laughs> and, a, and a cup of coffee. <laughs> like, what are you, who's your Target bud? But like, I love to go out to eat with you, but I like to eat out with others. It's just different experiences. Like you and I are not going to go to a sushi place. Right? Don't don't put me in a box. I'm not going to put you in a box, but like I it, had sushi already this year. Okay, but it's just it's not like I don't put all that like it's like to me I think some people put that lot of pressure like, "Oh, we're married and now that's it. You're my person. We do everything I want to do. You have to do it with me too because we're married." Right? And it was talking about like that there's like a friend relationship, like there's a lot of a lot of there's some statistics there of like women over the age of 65 where the husband has passed or like widowed and they found like friends to like go through life mm -hmm. like nothing sexual like none of that stuff right but they're like they're friends like on like this chapter of their life mm -hmm. and like legal systems don't recognize them like it's hard you almost have to lie to like to have them like stay in like in the hospital like some people get like cancer like the, there was this one story of the lady she got cancer and her friend was with her through the six years of her fighting cancer mm -hmm. to initially to eventually when she she passed but she had to tell the doc the hospital like that was her wife or something even though there was a legal document saying that like, she was medically responsible for her mm -hmm. and like everything but they're just not acknowledged as like that friend because there's no and then, so then it, then it becomes a question of, well, what is this relationship? Like, wh how do we classify, like, what you have, like, this thing? Because they don't have sex means they don't have, like, a very close bond relationship. So, you know, I'm, like, driving and I'm thinking in the car. I'm just like, wow. I never thought about it from that point of view. Hmm. And then they always ha also talk about, like, the good with the bad. So, like, what happens when you, like, break up in a, a friendship? Yeah. Like, a divorce? Like, you know, like, there's, like, a breakup. <laughs> Like if you were to go to your boss and say, "Oh man, I broke up with my friend," they'd be like, "Okay, you get your ass to work, right?" Yeah. Versus if I had a divorce, and they, they would still tell you get your ass to work. Uh, 
some people wouldn't or you know they said like the boss would be more like understanding if you put your dog to sleep versus you and your friend broke up i think they'd be more understanding of dog going to sleep <laughs> putting the dog to sleep divorce friend i don't even think they acknowledge the friend breakup for most things I think what you're speaking to is the uh, the modern perspective of marriage. So I th- I think that's fair. Years and years and years ago, marriage went like this. Look, I want to have some kids. Cause, you know, my bloodline obviously is so important; it needs to be passed on. What you what you trying to do? Well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm cool to have some kids. So uh, you gonna be you gonna be building the house? Yeah, I can build a house. You know, ain't nothing for me. But look, I'm gonna get hungry. What you do? Well, I I can cook, but you got to go hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hunt. I'm in the. Don't worry. I'll work the farm. All that. Now, look. I don't really want to have to deal with these kids. You gonna like raise them, <laughs> treat them right. I'll take care of them when they're like thirteen or something. But like, you know, you gonna you, know, you gonna do all that? Yeah, yeah, I got that. And I think that's what that's what marriage was. Well, yeah, they talk about it in the podcast and too. And it made sense because the, w- marriage Hundreds has has, has changed, right? Like it was like an agreement, basically. Marriage mm-hmm. went from an agreement to now this romantic. Um, like, you know, I have to love you to be married, then to now you're the person. Yeah, but that's also that's also marketing. Yeah, no, I agree. So then they start talking about like... like Engagement it, rings weren't a thing. Exactly. They're, that's exactly what they said. They're like, oh, somebody yeah. somebody who says engagement rings right now are going to be really ticked off with you. They're no, going to really, like shun that's, this that's, book. That's a, that's a thing of modern... <laughs> Marriages. That's 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 marketing from De Beers. So did you know that there's, How a, do we there's sell? a divorce ring now? I I, I didn't know that, but yeah, it sounds that was sounds right. New it that I found out. <laughs> because how do we keep selling people on these things? Correct. Uh, marketing Correct. is oh, you need to get an engagement ring. Before it was a dowry. Yeah. Now most people would probably prefer a dowry. I prefer it. Probably do better for you. You ain't getting you ain't getting shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got the ring, you're lucky you got that. <laughs> But then it's, oh, no, you need a ring. Then it's, oh, you have to have a ring that's three months of salary. Then it's, oh, it's only three months of salary? Yeah. And then that's when you get caught up with people who are getting married for the, the day. day. The day the day and the, and the ring. They want a wedding. Yeah. They don't want a marriage. And there's yeah. a big difference. I don't remember my wedding. It wasn't, it, it was cool. <laughs> you know, it wasn't bad. It was cool. But you don't that's remember not, the wedding? I mean, I was there. Oh, boy. I, mean, I asked you this the other day. Was the wedding the most significant day in your marriage? The most significant day was the wedding. I can't say that. I don't. Honestly, I don't think there's been a most significant I say, day. I, I can't even point. Like a because day. it's the compounding of days that gives the, for me, the marriage significance. Okay. And then we were also together before. Like, That's very true. If, if I'm getting technical about a non-technical thing, the most significant day would be the day that we met or decided we were in a relationship. That would be way more significant than the day that we said, we're going to keep being in a relationship. <laughs> now let's pay some money. Have these people I don't really much fuck with like that. That's uh, not true. We didn't have people at the wedding that we didn't fuck with. There was like maybe one table of like uh, bystanders, but the rest were, it was very selective. It wasn't as selective as I wanted. Robert, you would have had like two people. <laughs> and that's you Me? and I. <laughs> you. I said, let's go to Jamaica. Let's go to Strawberry Hill. Uh-huh. I'm going to fly out my mom. I'm going to fly out her mom. Uh-huh. It'll be the four of us. Then what do I hear? But my sisters. Uh-huh. Exactly. I was being nice with the moms. I didn't, no. even really, like, I didn't really like it. So, because I don't really care about weddings, I'm, I, I'm I don't deeply invested in marriage. I don't regret having the wedding. I thought I don't regret having the wedding. I thought I'm glad that we did it because I know we thought about not having one. We never thought about not having one. We just well, thought about it thought being about even having, smaller. Yes, that's fair. That's fair. And we for for Miami, our wedding was small. It was tiny. <laughs> but it was very elegant. It was. It was very. It was nice decorum. Yeah. But not over the top. It was just, it was, it was intimate. That was, I was not trying to hold you. <laughs> yes, you were. It was intimate. It was perfect. It was very perfect weird because I'm the one that holds hands. You're really not. I don't. So it's weird. But I thought it was would... there. And then like when it was in there, it's like, oh, okay, this is good. But like now I have to like stop because I don't want it to get hot. 
That's 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 what she does to me. That's what she does to me all the time. I'll just be like, three, two, da. Suck at this shit. That's what she does to me. I don't like all that. the time. I am the I am the affectionate one. I am the romantic. You she are is the romantic. Not into you that. Are, it's like, oh, you are. You are. Uh, I have to, I have to give you that. Yeah. You are. I, I, now I, that changes in another department, but we're not gonna talk about that just yet. <laughs> We don't. We, we still get to know y'all. We don't really know y'all classmates like that. Just yet. Oh boy! But but to speak to um the friendship relationship, yeah. that is something I have been reading a lot about. Um, I'm a mental health counselor, and I I be reading, and uh, I you know in the last few years I've read more about friendship relationship sessions. Yeah. And there are friendship coaches. I've I've been yeah. reading a lot about that. Um, more and more. I have yet to do one. Oh really? Yeah, I mean. Okay. Well, it's significant, but no, no one's no one's come to me for. I it. thought it's so, so like right now when you said that's what we're gonna talk about, it like the, the, it just like went off. The alarms went off because I just saw that episode and it was. Uh, I mean, I saw it. I didn't, I didn't see it. I listened to it, but it was uh, made me think about like, huh, that's true, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't think you have to marry your best friend either. Like, I think you can be married. I, I, have, I like, think you have to friend. be friends. I think you have yes. to be friends yes. with, with your yes. marriage partner. Yes. I, I, you don't have to, but I don't, I don't know how it works if you're not. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think whatever two people decide works for them in a marriage is what works for them kind of thing. Yeah. But to be honest with each other is like what that is. In couples session, I am very clear with people. It's not for me to tell you how your marriage has to be. Right. But it is for me to help you figure out what works for your marriage. Correct. So there are lots of things I would never do. <laughs> but if it works for you, then, so then you should it. do it. As I long agree. as everyone is, as long as it is consensual and legal, yep. go forth. Yeah. Go forth and do your thing. But I think those are those, that's where it comes down to like having that open communication and talking and that sort of thing so it was it was it was very good i am i am gonna get the book though and read it so maybe we'll talk about it once i read the book what's the name of the book i don't remember all right you know i don't remember these things <laughs> okay. it's something about relationships yeah it's it's weird to bring it why would i think that if you bring something up you'd like know what you're talking about yeah i know that it's a book it's on yeah. my mind that was enough words probably pages it was a book this is the subject yeah uh, that sounds like something i might i'm read. being i'm being ridiculous I get it. No. <laughs> but i'm glad you recognize that talent <laughs> winning marriage <laughs> winning marriage she does ridiculous i say i'm ridiculous don't do that shit, don't do that shit. we don't we don't really that's not, that's not really how it is got my phone out but i'm not reading a story what you doing? I'm reading an Ask the Black Kids. Woohoo! We want to thank all y'all. The Ask the Black Kids are happening a lot. We're actually kind of struggling to keep up with them. Um, and that's good. Maybe we maybe we make it like 50 50 Reddit stories and six brown chick stories and more Ask the Black Kids. So for like us to that. do that, for us to do that, we need y'all to keep sending us these stories. We love it. We're gonna make sure we answer each and every single one. As yes. long as it's not like illegal or threatening us, we are definitely going to read it. <laughs> Ask the black kids at gmail.com. Let's get into this one. Okay, let's go. I do try to keep these anonymous. If you want to be anonymous, please make sure you say you want to be anonymous. I'm going to just shout out my dog, Cedric. So Cedric hit me in the DMs. He said, do you remember Do you remember we did the episode and there was a story about revenge cheating? I, had to, I think it was I have, to, I have to choose between my wife and my best friend and she had cheated. So then I cheated with my friend because the opportunity came up. Vaguely. The point is I started explaining this is something that people do. And you're like, why would you do this? I don't understand. The friend's just waiting. And I said, it's called revenge cheating. In the streets, it's called get your lick back. Okay. And you were like, get your lick back. And I was like, see, you don't understand because you, you never dealt with all this toxicity. You're like, I'm glad. Anyway, the point which which the comments on that were mostly like how trash the dude was in the story and how trash his wife was and how trash the friend was. Uh-huh. But a lot of comments were like, I'm so glad Mrs. Sawyer doesn't know what a toxic relationship is. <laughs> it gives us hope. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you too can meet a Robert. Oh, I yeah, I, I think they're out there. I think they're out there. I know they're out there. There are good people. 
Yeah. I don't know why the rules of the world are like the good people and the trash people seem to like ex- meet exclusively. I don't know why that is, but there are good men, good women, good days, good thems. There are good everybody's. I agree. There's a lid for every, what is it? A, a lid for, for every pot. All right. Let's just read Cedric's, what Cedric wrote. So in, he was referring to that video where okay. you had no idea what revenge cheating get you lit back was. Okay. So I saw y'all's recent video about the guy revenge cheating and noticed how you had to explain to your wife. I was just curious if she really didn't understand it. Reason is because I have been having to explain situations like that to my current girlfriend, baby mother, 30 year old female about basic things like this that I thought were common knowledge. But it's gotten to the point that I've been trying to figure out if she really doesn't know or if she's just playing ignorant to lower my guard. Is it really common for people to not understand basic concepts like this? No offense to your wife intended. No offense taken. No offense taken, Cedric. <laughs> we appreciate you writing it. I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> Cedric, she's not acting. I off, really don't. I promise you. Uh, and it's not just about relationship things. We could talk about geography. Oh, uh, locations of continents. Mm. What continents are there? How many? We, lots of things I, we can get I know, into. I know some of the basics. I said some. I didn't. I didn't say all. I said some. I'm never gonna put you out there. Perfect. To try to like make you seem how you I'll are. I'll do that for myself, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a struggle because I know. I know. I the camera goes off, and I know, and I'm just not gonna. <sighs> but like, don't. But yes, yeah, Cedric, there's probably a lot of people like me. Um, there's a lot of things you talk about I've never heard of. And it's like so common. Like I, I'll ask you about it. And you're like, of course, it's that. And I'm like, what? I just heard about this. And I'm like I've been going on for like five or six years. I don't know. Or 50 or 60. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's a matter of exposure. Yes. Both of us grew up fairly sheltered. Both of us grew up fairly sheltered. The difference where I kind of leap ahead is... Uh, I was really out in these streets like that. And it's once I became a therapist and Maybe. suddenly my experiences are augmented by working with a wide variety of people. So I've been a therapist over 15 years at this point. I've worked in different environments. I've worked in I've worked in lower socioeconomic neighborhoods, what we refer to as the hood lovingly. I've worked with the uh, super rich elite uh, <laughs> elite. Yeah. Um, I'll say super rich. They really are super rich. Right. I've worked with them. I've worked with the in between. Um, I've done couples. I've done substance abuse. I've done uh, mostly a lot of children, children and families. Yeah. So it's not that I personally have experienced so many things, but when you you know you listen to people week after week and you you build these relationships with people, I've heard so many things. So sometimes when I'm telling her, yeah, you know, some people just they that, that's not what they. It's not my life. I do live in a bubble. I mean, I'm. I think I'm open to things than more than people that I hang around with, kind of thing. But I'm not exposed to a lot of things, so it's like some of the stuff is very shocking. To I don't me. think you're open to shit. I know you don't think that, but that's because you don't know how many other people are not open to shit. I have a I have a better understanding of how well, many other people are more closed in. Not open to and shit. I under I have a I have an <laughs> intimate understanding of how. Well, rigid you okay, are. Okay, so let me let me put it this way. I am rigid, but people can do whatever the heck they want to do. I'm just not gonna partake in it. I don't like I that's what they want to do, that's fine. Like it doesn't it doesn't then become my sole purpose in life to go against that. That's healthy. That's not why I call you rigid. Well, that's what, I'm just making sure that I I'm call you rigid it. because of not I'm not gonna be doing all of it. We read these stories, you know, this threesome, this thruple, this fifty people relationship. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about things more like like snorkeling. No, but see, see that? Well, I, I, no. You're not going to snorkel. I think we already did that once, didn't we? Tell the snorkel story. We, we did the snorkel thing. You already talked about it in another episode. We did it. Yeah, but they don't remember, honey. So I'm going to just remind them. So <sighs> for her birthday, I flew her out to uh, St. Thomas. And you know we're staying at a, a lovely resort. I don't, I don't remember. This is a long time ago. I really don't remember the trip. No, that's and another. That's another episode about that thing there. It was a good trip, overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Overall, it's a little uh, whatever. So don't just stop running me. He's trying to derail me. So we went to the beach many days, and on this day we went to the beach. They had snorkeling, and I said, 
oh, honey, let's do the snorkeling. No, I'm not doing that. You think all, I mean, just the hell knows the blah, blah, just, just ridiculous, bro. Just like to a level of, you could have just said no. You have to put all that sauce on it, right? Mm. And saucy. then I realized, I don't even think she knows what snorkeling is. Come to find <laughs> out, she's thinking, we're going to go deep sea scuba diving to like the ocean floor. It's like, fam, like you got to get like certified. For, like, what are you talking about? So then what do we do? We go snorkeling. You enjoy the snorkeling. Yeah, for like 15 minutes. That's what I call rigid. Not You don't even know what it is, and you're saying no. I'm not talking about things you are morally against, ethically against, things that just don't align with your spirit. Shout yeah. out Cole for getting out that drama. You were right, boy. I'm not talking <laughs> about that. I'm talking about... The only, the only thing I want to experience, like, like experiment with, is like food. Other than that, I'm, I'm really okay. Okay, but but then let's 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 put it in this picture. Mm. Let's let's let, let's frame it like this. I have never put you in a compromising position. I myself don't do unsafe things. Morally, we are aligned. Ethically, we are aligned. And when I say, "Hey, I think you should look at this," you don't even want to look at it. You don't even want to look, and it's like, bro, like, I, I don't come with that wild shit. Like, hey, you, what are you doing? Do you want to do some heroin? I, like, we don't do. I'm not coming with that kind of shit. I come I with know. like, hey, you want to read this book? Ah, because I suggested it. But let this Trevor Noah guy recommend a book. <laughs> you see how it is. <laughs> let Morris Chestnut come out with an autobiography. You see how it is. I'd probably read Trevor Noah's book over Morris Chestnut. <laughs> you haven't even read, have you read Trevor Noah's book? Yes, multiple times. And I listened to the audio because I want to hear him talk. I'm very fond of Trevor Noah. You already know that, though. Hmm. Huh. I, I think I actually have listened to so much more Trevor Noah. I, I love the way his mind works. I've listened yes. to a lot. It's I, quite I, interesting. I, he's, I, I really appreciate his perspective. But to answer you, Cedric... Um, is it common for people to not know about common sense things? Common sense is not that common and it's all about experience. Yeah. And exposure. So, so many people have different experiences. So I wouldn't yeah. say that your girl is necessarily playing you. It's like when I talk, when I talk with Chase, right? He, we, he, we, we come from very different worlds. We are both from Miami. We both like, we are both black men grew up in Miami on paper Y'all would say that we are similar. similar. And and we align in a lot of areas. But I'm telling you, me and me and old boy, like our expectations, uh, when we talk about relationships, it's entirely different. Yeah. His his notion, I mean, it's he's just, never even experienced things that I take as normal. And I thank God have never personally experienced what is normal in his world. And when he tells me things, when I tell him it's 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 it, Yo, it's like it's different planets it's different multiverses yet we run in the same circle yeah so it, it's just experience and what you're exposed to and i i think then the, the real difference is even if you're not exposed to it can you have an understanding that it exists so i think we went way out to, to respond to said but hopefully hopefully said that that kind of clears it up Everybody has their own experiences, and maybe she just she doesn't come from that world that you come from. Yeah, that's all fair. Cause I you have to explain a lot of stuff to me. Yeah, and I, I quite honestly, I I don't want someone who could tell me the intimate details of revenge cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I don't like you know, like I once a long time ago we went to a Christmas party and they played um Cards Against Humanity, which oh a lot yes, of yes I remember that a lot of a lot of Ooh. Nazi things. I mean, whoever developed that a lot of. I get it. It's funny. Okay. It's a lot of weird stuff. Uh, and they had all these questions about hentai. And it's like, like I got to explain. Like, half the people in the room didn't know. So now I'm explaining. But you can't explain this stuff until people are like, well, then how are you? No, no, no. Because I don't. No, I don't. I don't. I don't, I said, I don't, I don't remember that one. We're not going to talk about it. that's good. This is a this is a this is a PG-13 show. OK, maybe maybe it's a few F-bombs. Maybe it's R, but it's still like. It's like coming to America R. It's not like okay. Saw R. That's that's yeah, what our yeah. show is. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I come from a background of believing it's important to know a little about a lot versus a lot about a little. So like I I really value that Renaissance style type thinking. Like I I know a little bit about so many things, 
And I know a lot about nothing in life. <laughs> Hopefully that was, I don't, I don't even know if we answered him anymore. Said, we thanks for writing him. in. Everyone else has been writing in. We're getting to you. Keep watching. Next episodes are coming up. Send us your microaggression. Send us your relationship topic. Send us your, what, workplace Anything. dramas? Oh, yeah, workplace drama. I've, I've been getting a few of those. Yeah. And we will make sure we get to it. No, All right, let's get to these. <laughs> let's get to these dramatic ass stories. All right, drama time. Why did I get married? And it's not even all with people who are married. Some of it's just stories of other people who are married. Entangled, if you will. Huh. Here's a story where they probably shouldn't get married. I accused my 28-year-old male fiance of cheating on me, 26-year-old female, and hmm. left the house. Oh. My fiance and I have been in a relationship for the last six years, engaged for the last two years, and we are about to get married in November 2024. Going to try and not make this long. She lied. It's very long. On Monday, I woke up around 2 a.m. to go to the bathroom. As I walked past my fiance's side of the bed, his phone went off with a message. I got curious and looked. The message was from a girl called Angie. Mm, mm, mm. The message said it was good to see you again, and I had a lot of fun. We should do it again sometime. I took his phone with me to the bathroom and read their chats. Nothing sexual or even flirty, but there was a bunch of conversations of meeting up at her place, what boy, they did boy, that day, oh all the fun they were having. Oh, boy. I remember yesterday that I wanted to do something with him, but he couldn't as his sister was in town, and they have arranged to meet and hang out for months now. He did invite me to go along, but I didn't go. Didn't want to take away from his time with his sister. Mm. My thoughts immediately went to him cheating on me. Oh, and boy. I started to bawl like a baby in the bathroom. Jeez, Louise. My fiance came rushing into the bathroom to see what was going on. I was not as quiet as I thought I was in the end. When he came close to me and asked what was going on, I told him not to touch me. He looked hurt in that moment and took a step back. I gave him his phone and told him, explain yourself through my tears. Oh, no. He took the phone, looked, and laughed. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> then I saw him laughing. I got up and stormed out, locking myself in the spare bedroom. Oh, my goodness. He came to the bedroom and through the door said he was sorry for laughing and tried to explain himself. Oh, my Before God. Before he said anything else, I told him to leave. He then left to our bedroom. That morning before he woke up, I grabbed some of my things and came to my sister's house. Oh, my. I have been here since Tuesday morning, too afraid to go home. Afraid? He sent me a message that morning saying he heard and saw me leave, but didn't want to stop me because of what happened the night before. Again, he said sorry for laughing, but the situation was just ridiculous in the moment, and his tired brain responded with laughter. I sent back some hurtful things and that he is a cheater. He responded. Angie's a nickname for my sister, Angelina. <laughs> he told me to confirm with his sisters if I didn't believe him, <laughs> and told me check Facebook and Insta if I need proof oh because pictures were posted of where they met up yesterday. He didn't say anything to the hurtful thing I said to him or anything else. But told me the house is open for me to come back anytime I like. And when I do, we will have a serious conversation about what happened and what will happen going forward. Huh. I'm scared to go home because I feel like he will be breaking up with me. And I don't you want should. that. How can I handle this? You I should. know I was wrong for the way I acted. I acted like a child. I overreacted. Yep. How can I fix this? What can I do now? Jeez. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You said she was, what, 26? I don't remember how old she is, but she's two types of stupid. Yes, she yes. is 26. First of all, she don't know the sister name. Well, let's get to the comments. Good segue. Good segue. <laughs> let's get to some of these comments. How did you not put Angie and Angelina together Come on. as the sister of the man you were supposedly married? What is that? Especially when he told you he was meeting his sister yeah. and and invited you to go. Sorry. But this is your own damn idiotic fault. Yes. Especially yes. since y'all have been together six years. You mean How in all that time you've time never heard her called of... Angie? What is that? That's asinine. Another comment. Even if you hadn't heard him call her Angie before, you knew that his sister's name was Angelina, which is obviously yes! very similar. And that she was in town. And he'd been Slow. hanging out with her. And you immediately jumped to assuming he was cheating. I know, I know you got to explain things to me that you would not have had to explain. That's, I'm sorry, but this bad. is absolutely buck wild of a reaction. <laughs> If he doesn't break up with you, you need to get yourself into therapy ASAP and Agreed. figure out where this knee-jerk reaction came from. Agreed. In fact, you really should do that either way because this level of trust issue as an otherwise stable six-year relationship is not normal. It is not. 
Oh my! It's so many. It's so many other things, though. Unless you're leaving out something huge like past infidelity. Original poster says nothing like that at all. He has always been loving and never hid anything from me. We know the password to every device each other owns. But, but my whole thing was, if I get up in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom and your phone goes off, I don't even think to look at it. Like, so she was curious. Like, why were you curious in the first place? Then she continued to like read more about it. If I had saw something on your phone, the remote by the TV and the phone's there, and I saw it, I wouldn't then open it up to go through the thing. Like, I don't, I don't, how did, like, what, th- this is something else underneath there. I think going through your partner's phone is the worst shit ever. Let me just go on record. I think yeah. that is just the dumbest shit because it is obviously a trust issue. As I've said before, I will say again, this is how I really am. If I have to worry no. About who you went, what you're doing. It's, uh, it's, it's no point in being together. Dunzo. I can't like, do I don't it. Even, I can't waste my but, time. But let's just let's just say she saw the phone, but and it was just an inappropriate message. Yeah. Like, she's not weird then, but the message wasn't inappropriate. It was from Angie. Angelina. Angie. That's that that's first. That's what I'm saying. First, once I'm surprised she didn't jump to aha, you're cheating on someone who has the same name as your sister. Or aha, you're cheating with your sister. Because you sound Ridiculous. 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 More then you gonna go into the bathroom? Like, so you then you had to like hide about it? Like if, no. If if I really felt that way, if I really felt it was something, you waking up. <laughs> God, I don't even get that. Another comment. I hate to be the asshole, but I'm curious to why cheating was the first thing you went to. If he's mm-hmm. never given you a reason to believe he's cheating and when he was especially clear about what and who he was going to see, I can't help but feel like there's some projection or guilt on your end. Original poster says, I was cheated on before by my previous boyfriend and found out in an utmost similar way. It's been six years. He's not cheating and you want to get married. And you want to get married. It's been six years. And don't forget the most important part, because like, you know, it's like parts of this. He invited you to go with him. What? Original poster said, before someone asked, I have heard him referring to his sister as Angie in the past, but my brain didn't put it together that night. Oh, my God. Because she didn't want to. She wants some drama. Well, I'm not going to say that. Huh? There is an update, though. Let's get to the update. I need an update sound. I need something for the update sounds. (laughs) Uh, Let me finish this other edit that she had. I have been at my sister's house since Tuesday morning, too afraid to go home, and the only text I have gotten from him so far is asking if I'm okay and good night. When I try to talk over the phone, he says, we will talk when you are home. He won't be doing it over the phone. That's right. The conversation is to be had face to face. Like that. Now here's the update that she gave a few days later. Okay. Update. I don't know what to do now. My fiance left me. (gasps) This morning, I got ready to go home. Before I left, I had a final conversation with my sister. And she basically said the same as all of you. During our conversation, the doorbell rung and my sister went to have a look at who was there so early on a Sunday. My fiance walked in, and I was actually excited to see him. I went in to hug him, but he pushed me away. I felt hurt in that moment, and he asked to speak to me in private. We went up to the guest room where I was staying. I'm not going to say everything we discussed on here, but the short of the story is he found it very childish for me to run out of the house without talking to him. Facts. He said he could forgive all that because misunderstandings happen. But what he can't forgive is the way I acted and ignored him and hid from him the last week. That's right. My insecurities all throughout these years have taken a toll on him, and he is done. The fact that a conversation with his sister caused me to do all this made him see me in a different light. I did try and explain, and he laughed at me saying my reasoning is bullshit. It's not just he, but the whole family refers to his sister as Angie, and I know that. He even brought up the instances where I called her Angie myself. Yep. Yep, yep. I tried to tell him that when I saw the messages, my mind just went blank. And he responded with, stop making excuses. I'm done with this. Yep. He stood on business. I love it. He then said, it's better to break up because he doesn't see this relationship going any further. I showed him all my stuff was packed and that I wanted to go home today. He just responded, too little, too late. Yep. He said it as if he was in a movie with no emotion on his face. Mm, mm, And he looked mm. at me. All I saw on his face for some reason is pity for me. He said he will be canceling everything and all the money that I have spent on the wedding so far will be in my account as soon as he gets the refunds. Before he left, he just said, I hope you will find someone that will be able to handle all your childishness and insecurities, but that won't be me. He brought up all my, ooh, damn. He brought all my things to my sister's house. He and two of his friends unload everything on my sister's lawn 
and left. What do I do now? I haven't been able to eat the whole day and just keep oh. crying. How yeah. can I fix this? No. I know I was wrong, but it's not fair that he will dump me because of this. Yeah. I don't know. There's no fixing. It's really about grieving and moving on because that's that. I I think he was in. That's something similar I want to do. And it wasn't just a fact. Like, I thought he was more than like open. Like he didn't even get he didn't even trip when she left. She went to his sister's house. He's like saying, how are you? Good night. But how did it take that many days for you to come home? So this was a Tuesday? No, this was a Sunday that he came over. Yeah. Remember when she started posting, it was Tuesday. Yeah, that's too long. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because because you, your sister texted you. Yeah. That cheating bitch. Oh, I love it. He packed all the shit up. I love it. He stood on business. Yeah, that's see that he get healthy. The reason why I'm calling this why did I get married? Because if you're marrying into this, it's crazy. Yeah. Now, now, she said, what can she do? And I would like for you to tell her what she can do. I tell her to move on. Because it seems like he's already made up his mind. Um, that part of, like, if she had gone back, if this was still, like, Tuesday or Wednesday, she need to take her ass home. She needs to be honest with him. She needs to talk to him. Maybe offer some therapy counseling together with him. Be apologetic, humble, like, vulnerable as you're supposed to be with someone you're marrying kind of thing. And then try to rekindle, rebuild. At this point, he threw that shit out. He need, she needs to let him be. Maybe, maybe later on they can spark something because he saw something he wanted to marry. Yeah, hell no. But I think he hell done. No. I think he's done. She I, needs to grieve and move on. He said, "The years of her, in, in, the years of her insecurities have weighed on him." Yeah. Here's how you. Here's what you can do to improve the situation. Let this relationship go. <laughs> What you are displaying is an anxious attachment style. This is something I work with people on a lot, how you relate to people. And because of you having the fear, you are pushing him away. Now, that's called an avoidant attachment style. But here's what I mean. He's trying to be healthy. He's trying to be understanding. And you're still being anxious about, is he going to cheat? Is he going to leave me? Does he love me? That's your anxiety. You've experienced some trauma. You were cheated on before, and I'm sorry that happened to you. But this isn't him. And as the phrase goes, you're bleeding on people that didn't cut you. Yeah. You, by your own words, he's been stable, supportive. You've never had to worry, but you're still letting this worry from another relationship, which means you're still in that another that other relationship emotionally because the trauma is still there. Now, I don't mean that you're, she's still in love with him or anything. No, no, no. But the yeah. trauma from that is still living with you. She hasn't processed. Yeah. You have to do something to work on this. Yep. I recommend therapy. You can go to Psychology Today. It's a nationwide, maybe even worldwide, I'm not sure, but it's definitely nationwide, like a yellow book of, of therapists. I'm on Psychology Today. Um, look for the therapist in your area because obviously I'm not your therapist. This is all entertainment. But find a therapist that takes your insurance or that you can afford that works with you on sliding scale and tell them, I have a lot of anxiety. I have trauma from being cheated on previously, whatever other relationship things you might've seen growing up or in previous relationships, I need to work on my attachment style. So I don't keep doing this in my relationships. Yeah. That's it. Let yeah. him go. Let him grieve what he thought was going to, he, he knew it wasn't working though. Cause that's insane. So I did the healthy thing. I gave the healthy answer. These are the stories. I'm not doing all this healthy shit, okay? Yeah. We're here for the tea. Yeah. Yeah, good for him, though. I'm, I'm glad we had a story where someone had actually, like, resolve, because that, that was not going to get any better. He stood on business. Yeah, as he should. <laughs> you go leave the damn house, be gone for how many days? You out your mind. Make sure you follow us on socials. <laughs> so you can see how we chop this long ass one up into like 90 seconds. Although I've been posting the longer ones and I love posting the longer ones. So maybe okay. like two minutes. At only black kids on all socials. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. In our next story.
My daughter is having an affair with the married neighbor. Oh. I told her she needs to move out of my house. <laughs> Well, you love laughing at people's people's <laughs> dilemmas. <laughs> Last week, I caught my daughter, 20-year-old female, leaving our neighbor's house early in the morning. Mm. I was getting a drink around 3 in the morning and watched her leave their house, and she snuck across <laughs> the yard and went through our basement door. Our neighbor is married and probably 30 years old. I assume his wife was gone for the night as her <laughs> car wasn't there. The next morning, I went down to my daughter's room and confronted her. At first, she denied it, but she eventually said that she has been sleeping with him for a couple of months. Hmm. I lost it at that point and yelled at her, <laughs> telling her he is married and she is helping to ruin a marriage. I told her that she needs to tell the wife or she needs to move out. She is clearly upset and thinks I'm overreacting. My wife also thinks I'm going too far. I get that the neighbor is the main issue, but I'm really disappointed in my daughter. Yeah. She knows his wife and has even babysat for them. Damn. Is telling her to confess or move out too far? I'm going to say, no, I don't want that shit in my house. I want that drama in there. But next door neighbor, that's be vicious. I don't, want no, I don't want none of that problem. He has a huge edit. Oh, okay. Huge. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Edit. Wow. Thank you all for responding. I'm sorry I couldn't respond to more of you. Some context I failed to put in here. My wife is very upset. She isn't siding with the affair. In fact, she was cheated on by an ex. She understands this better than I do. I think that is a big part of why I'm so angry. My wife is also a better person than I am. She's the only reason I'm the man I am today. I have too much respect to let people even anonymously insinuate that she is a problem here. I should have done a better job in explaining her side. Any comment saying anything bad about my wife will be met with a big F-U-C, uh-oh, you. Okay, okay, okay. Writing all this out and reading comments has been incredibly helpful. I haven't changed my mind, but it's made me think about the situation more especially looking at the future in my relationship with my daughter. I just shot a text to my daughter and apologized for my anger and asked her to go get a drink with me tonight and talk. I told her I'm sorry. I didn't ask her how she is feeling. I need to get my composure back before my next work call here in a few minutes, but we'll continue to read and reply to comments as I have time today. Edit number two. Jeez, these are long. Why don't I just do the magic of editing, read this, and then I'll sum it up for you. This shit is long. A few moments later. All right. Through the magic of editing, what just took like years of my life to read, you will now get it in like 30 seconds or less. He believes that their relationship would survive if he, if he kicked her out because he raised her to be independent and she'll be all good. And actually, he's confident they can still have a relationship. But he's really not planning on kicking her out, but he is very upset with her. He really, really wants to talk with her. He wasn't getting up to get a drink of alcohol. He was getting up to get a drink of water. Shame on y'all for being the luscious you are and assuming he's a drunk. The neighbor was not grooming her from when she was younger. Ooh. Since she's been an adult, she, she was babysitting for him. She met him one night while she was out with her friends. She was already 21, and that's when it started. Mm. Nothing ever happened before she was 18. Mm. Wow. Wow, there's a lot of these comments going depth in detail here. It's so, honey, it's so long. I don't even. So stop reading it. And apparently they've come to a decision that she will be moving out because she wanted to anyway to be on her own, but that their relationship is going to be in a good place. Quote, knowing that she's the other woman helped her to break or at least hurt this marriage. I talked to her, whatever. Uh, we're going to cut all this out. Long story short is, why did he get married if he was just going to cheat with a 21-year-old babysitter? I don't know. Is the dad know. wrong? Is the dad wrong for put, for saying, for being angry at the daughter and saying she's got to get out no. if she doesn't confess? I don't know about the confess part. Like the confess, the confess part that's between him and his wife. What I don't want is that my daughter is entertaining all this drama shit over there. You don't know that lady come over here with a gun and shoot up the whole house. Yeah, I don't want that in my house. Which there was actually a con- <laughs> there was actually there was actually house. a comment about that. So no, 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 no. But so I'm just like, I wouldn't want, like, I wouldn't want that in my house. So that was, that's my, the confessed or not, that's between her, that's between him and his wife. I just don't want that drama over here. No. Should he have asked how she's feeling? There, I were, mean, there were comments that said, oh, you didn't even check with how she's feeling about it. And it's, I, I, I don't think so. I don't, in that moment, I, I, I mean, I think, I think I need to have a discussion, like just for like the, their relationship. Like, hey, what's going on here? Like, I'm not judging you. You want to do grown up things? But he was judging her. Well, well, he judged because she in her his house. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like if she was with a married man, he may not even know all that. You know, if you like not living at home, you don't know who they. Yeah, but to look out the window and see her creep across the street—that's different. It's like, oh no, 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 that's wild. Hold up, baby girl, what's going on? That's wild. That's a problem for me. (laughs) I think with these comments, and I, I, you guys didn't have to go. It was, it was, it would have taken like seven minutes. Um, the beauty. And the luxury that we have is that we're reading someone's real life, allegedly, or chat GPT, but real life, and they're writing it out like a story. So we're seeing beginning, middle, and end. But for them, they lived it. And in the moment, I challenge any of you to be in a situation like this or any of the ones that we read in and in the moment have all the clarity no. that you now on your no. phone or in your in the luxury of your right. air-conditioned place right. and you get to judge the person. In the moment, there's no way I'm like, well... I'm just discovering that you're cheating. Yeah. You're, you're part of an affair no. with a married man across the street. No. How do you feel? No. No. no like no. that would just take this trip. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, not in the uh, moment. Later on, yes. I. I you I'm glad your, he. You, you guys get out. <laughs> that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> I try not to speak out of anger. So I might not have made demands oh. out of anger, but I would have. I would have definitely said, "Oh, we will be talking about this again," and you probably would have got a good finger wagging. If you're too young, you don't know what that means. It doesn't mean hitting or anything. It means, I told you. Yeah. Also, I don't actually wag my finger. No, I, I don't. I mean, yeah, I don't even think about, about the part. I mean, I think about, I would hope that they'd have like, I mean, I don't know their relationship as a, as a father and, and a daughter, but I would, I would think they would be able to talk like, hey, you sure you want to be doing this? You know, all that comes with dealing with a married man. Like, so this wasn't in <laughs> Am I the Asshole? This was in Am I Overreacting? Was Uh-oh. he overreacting? No. I don't think so. I think no. you need to clean it up. Clean up the reaction, yeah. But I don't think he overreacted. I don't think he overreacted at all. I don't know about the confessing part. I don't care about the confessing part. In our next story. All right. Am I the asshole for getting it elsewhere since my wife didn't want to have sex anymore? Oh. Oh. Why ask? Hey. Basically, my wife has decided unilaterally that we are done having sex. Oh. She found out that she cannot have kids due to a choice she made before we met. Hmm. And kids, apparently, are the only reason she was willing to have sex. What? I love my wife, and I enjoy being intimate with her. But it was making our marriage untenable after two years of this. So I posted for advice. I got a lot of great support and suggestions about how to talk to my wife. I tried a lot of it. I started going for counseling for myself as well. But no matter how I approached her about our situation, she would not try and see it from my point of view. Hmm. Every discussion would end with her crying and screaming in my face that I am trying to emotionally manipulate her. I then wrote her a letter outlining my feelings and asking her to come with me for counseling, to seek it for herself, perhaps to go see a doctor. I was kind and loving in the letter. Hmm. The last thing I wanted to do was set her off. I worked on the wording with my counselor to make sure I wasn't saying anything aggressive that can be misinterpreted. She read the letter, then she scrawled across it with her red sharpie, quote, go get it elsewhere because you are not getting it from me. Oh, wow. End quote. Then she walked out. I sat there for about an hour doing nothing. Then I told myself that was what I was going to do. Oh. We are both fairly successful in our jobs. I'm not super attractive, but I'm fit and a good talker. Mm -hmm. It took a while, but I met someone. We started out as just friends, but it became physical. Oh. I made sure she knew I was married. She is not interested in a relationship, so I guess I am a safe option for her. My wife found out because I did not try to hide it from her. She was crying when I got home one night. When I came in, she asked if I was going to leave her. I said no. She asked if I was cheating on her, and I said I was getting sex elsewhere. She said that was cheating, and I did not disagree. I asked her what she wanted to do. She said I had to stop. Oh. I asked her if we were going to start having sex. She said I was an irrational asshole if I thought that she would have sex with me after I cheated. Oh. I went to my desk and I pulled out a photocopy of the letter I wrote with her answer in it. Oh, that's what she said. I went to have a shower and go to my room to sleep. When I woke up, she was sitting on the couch waiting to talk. Okay. She said that she reread the letter and that she realized she had not before. She assumed it was just a letter begging for sex. She said she would go for counseling alone and with me. All I had to do was to stop having sex elsewhere. I said I would be willing to pause my friendship until we saw a counselor. And that if I saw progress in our relationship, I would break it off. She said she would not agree to counseling without me leaving the other woman. Oh. It almost turned into a fight, so I just went for my run. Before I left, I asked her what would compel her to go to counseling if I stopped having sex elsewhere. When I got back, she still did not have an answer. She couldn't even say that our relationship was worth saving. Wow. I don't want a divorce, 
but I am willing to leave her over this. Oh. I am 28. Wow. I am not going the rest of my life without sex. She refuses to see my side. Oh, this is a terrible story. Mm. Oh. Mrs. Sawyer. This is terrible. I don't I don't know what you do here. I don't I don't know if this can be saved. The wife seems to be she's dealing with something. Um but she's very like mm, it's very, rigid. It's not just rigid. She's just like very one sided too. Um a lot of marriages are like that. But it was it, it's not just like she's clearly dealing with something, right? Because like she's what? saying she doesn't want to have sex because she can have children. And that's the only reason why she wants to have sex. So that to me is okay. something else, right? I don't I don't know how you classify that, but that's something different. That, what, but that could be trauma, that could be religion, yeah. that could just be her beliefs. Right. But that's a lot to impose on her husband wanting intimacy. The intimate, I don't know why I said that. The problem I see with that is how did he not know that however long they've been together? Right. But maybe she didn't disclose it till now. That's what what I understood that to be. I can't imagine, and this is just me speculating, but I can't imagine that they had a very intimate relationship that she was initiating or receptive to. I, I don't imagine their relationship was super hot and steamy. And then suddenly she can't have kids and it's like, well, I'm done. Now, I think he, as a loving husband, would have to hold the space for her finding out that she can't have children. Correct. Also, he implies that she can't have children because of a decision she made. Um, To me, that's a clear indication of, well, because she had an abortion before. Because, you know, like that's, that's what he's trying to say. And there's something else that he didn't actually go into but there was a line where we both looked at each other so when she didn't read the letter he went to his room to go to sleep because they're not even sleeping together right that was before this right so there are issues there's there's some other things compounding on there and then like it was like she's upset at the fact like he loves her he's telling her he loves her he wants to be intimate he found this person he did not. This was two years after they weren't having That's sex. That's what I'm saying. So this wasn't two seconds. This no. was two years. Right. From a 26-year-old to 28-year-old. My gosh. That's like a very mature 26-year-old is what I'm saying. <laughs> he doesn't want to break his marriage. Right. And he says it numerous times. He loves his wife. But there's a part of, I mean, that's, it's a. I don't know. The wife is kind of like having a little bit of a tantrum. I, I want to empathize with her because clearly she's dealing with something. But, but she's not communicating. Time, and no? what is he supposed to do in two years Correct. in the absence of Correct. communication? And he said he's not hiding it. She told him. And then like th- that was like disingenuous too that she didn't he's, even read it. Yeah. What is that? He's like pleading. He's like spewing his like... And then you just go get elsewhere. What? But, and we've talked about this because a lot of these stories tend to come back to dead bedroom. Yeah. And the lower libido partner tends to, not tends to, controls the, the frequency of sex. And there's a feeling of rejection. And then there's also the, but why don't they want me, which is the rejection. But then it's, is, is there something going on with them? Right. Because imagine you're in a dead bedroom and you find out that your partner was cheating. Dead yeah. bedroom, by the way, is when there's little to no sex going on in a in a relationship, a long term relationship, and it is both it happens to both men and women. It happens amongst genders, amongst sexualities. It's not just a, a hetero man and woman thing where the woman's withholding. It does happen where men withhold. Um, imagine two years and you don't know why. Is it a medical issue? Yeah. Is was she was was she did she experience some kind of trauma? trauma? Right. Assault? She's just not find me attractive. Right. You're, you're, he's thinking he's going to internalize that. How could he not? How could he not? How could he not? So you're saying you can't go two years. Oh, no. Oh, Mrs. Sawyer be getting it in? <laughs> oh, snap. The people, the people want to know. Of course. Oh, shit. <laughs> Why are you acting surprised? <laughs> I'm, I'm with the people. I'm just trying to find out. I'm just trying to find out. Two years? What is that? Oh, shit. So you're not, what you, he's like, one year, you go one year. No. No. Can you can no. you get through this recording without getting what you want? You know what? <laughs> We're trying to finish this. 
Oh boy, I feel bad for I feel bad for I feel bad for both actually. I think she's a little manipulative, but I feel bad for both. This could turn into a toxic situation. Oh. Toxic. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was actually, be. actually, I wasn't going to do a toxic Confession. confessions this episode. I just thought they were all kind of okay. shitty. But I it's it's up to you. I'm good not doing one. No toxic confessions this week. That's okay. <laughs> well, our last story is a bit of a toxic confession. Oh, boy. <sighs> Buckle up, because this one is on some bullshit. I read the first part of this story. If you're rocking with us, we're going to do it. Are you rocking with us? Are you tapped in? Did you hit subscribe? Are you subscribing on YouTube? Are you subscribing on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts? Did you know we're on Google Podcasts? Oh, no. I forgot. I, I saw, I got a report this week of how many people listen. I was like, oh. Google has Oh, I didn't even know. Tens of people are listening to us on it. Oh, I didn't even know there was Not ten. Tens. I didn't know there was Tens a Google Tens of podcast. people are listening to us on Google. If you're one of them, shout out to you. I didn't know there was a Google following. There is. Although they, they're going to discontinue it later on. I oh. digress. Okay. But if you guys are locked in, you hit subscribe. And, and you're leaving a comment not just on Instagram, not just on YouTube, though we, we need those too. Leave us them five-star reviews. We are trying to get this thing popping, okay? okay? I sat her down and I told her, look, woman, we're podcasters now. And she said, okay. Yeah. As long as I don't have to wait two years. So <laughs> leave us five-star reviews. Don't, don't give no damn three-star. Don't give no damn four-star. Uh, you know what to do. Five-star reviews. I used to listen to podcasts. be like, oh, my God, why do they keep saying this? da, da, da. Now I get it. Now you get now it. Now I'm here. Okay. Now I'm here. If you made it this far, you obviously fuck with us. So come on now. You're a classmate. Shout out to you. Shout out to... I've gotten some messages from people who are like, yeah, I'm not black, but y'all are fire. I've gotten several of those. Yes, again, we're for everybody. Yeah, I was like, why are you talking about listen. not being black? It doesn't matter. Hey. Okay. It's because of the name, honey. I get it. Remember, there are people who are like, can I see Black Panther? That's black in the dust. Oh, boy. I digress. The point is, we're about to read this long ass, super juicy story, but make sure you're subscribed, locked in, tuned in. Fuck with us. Send us your email. Get involved. Buy the merch. Okay. Oh, did I see? I'm dropping the gems. You're, you're like all you're 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 very animated. Was and it excited. was it accidental? Was it accidental though? What was it? Accidental? We got a new reaction show coming. Oh. Merch coming. Mm. Okay. Mm. Tap in. All right, I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need your help on this one. What do you need me to do? Because it's a long story. You need me to read something. You're gonna read the third and final update. Okay. But let me tell you, that second update is. Jeez okay. Louise. Let's go. My brother-in-law just told my wife he's in love with her. My brother-in-law just told my wife. So that's her brother. No, we're not that messy. Oh. It's her sister's husband. Okay. So my wife's sister's husband just told my wife he's in love with her. Okay. Ooh. Yesterday, my brother-in-law, out of the blue, asked my wife if she can meet him for lunch. There's something he needs to talk to her about. My wife tells me about it before accepting and asks if I might have something to do with my sister. My wife tells me about it before accepting and asks if it might have something to do with my sister. Maybe they were having problems and he wants to discuss with another woman. I find it odd, but I tell her, go find out. She accepts and they meet for lunch at a place near her office the next day. That's where he tells her that he is in love with her. He lays it on thick how beautiful she is, how she makes him feel, how he would treat her if she were his. How it was love at first sight and blah, blah, blah. Mind you, this man is married to my sister and has two kids. Oh, it's married to his sister. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. shit. So it's his sister's husband. Doesn't make it any better. Jeez. Actually, it might make it worse. Anyway, he and my wife had a friendly relationship. Our family see each other often as we are a close family. He does text her frequently, but there is nothing overly sexual. What do you mean overly? What do you mean nothing overly sexual? There what should be nothing mean? sexual. Nothing sexual. My brother-in-law texts and calls my mom, too, so none of us thought anything of it. I want to stop a moment and emphasize that my wife isn't cheating on me with him. My wife and I share an iPad and I see every one of her texts from there. We were also looking at each other's phones all the time. So none of that is going on unless she has a burner. (laughs) 
So she doesn't let him finish, walks out, and calls me immediately to tell me what happened. While she's on the phone with me, the texts from him start. He didn't mean it. He thinks it's only infatuation. Blah, blah, blah. She leaves work early to come home to talk to me about this, and her phone is blowing up the entire time with calls and texts from him. Oh, no. I tell her to answer, and she put him on speaker so I can hear. He's crying, begging oh. not to tell my sister. Apparently, when we were together this past weekend, he thought she was flirting with him and that he thought they had a moment when they were alone in our kitchen. Now, my wife is a major ball buster, and I suppose I can see how that can be taken as flirting. He asks if she told me, to which I answer, yes, I'm on speaker. Then he starts begging me. This went on a while. My main question was whether he had cheated on my sister before. He said no, swore in his kids' lives. It's just my wife. He said I should understand. What? I'll, I'll smack fire out, bro. What? You understand that bitch? Boy, Hell I don't no. Mm. First of all, that's my wife. And that's my sister. He's got to go. So I'm done listening at that point and told him I wasn't going to do anything tonight and I would call him tomorrow. That's where we are right now, and I really don't know what to do. My wife says drive over there right now and tell my sister, but the idea of wrecking yep. my sister's family is killing me. Oh, well, it's going to be right anyhow. Thinking about what it will do to my nieces makes me want to vomit. I know the right thing to do is to tell my sister, but I'm also thinking about my wife as well. It's not her fault, but there is sure to be resentment towards her from the family. Even if my sister doesn't divorce him and they reconcile, the whole episode can tear my family apart. I don't give a shit about him. He tried to destroy my family, but I do care about everyone else. No. I don't know what to do. Any advice would help. No. Remember, no. it's a three-part story. It's long. Stay no. locked in. No. Don't forget that. That's, 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 that's done. He's got to go. No. Uh-uh. I don't even understand. Is he thinking about all this stuff? Like, how, you can't do anything with him because you're going to be thinking about what he trying to do? I think original poster is in tune with his emotions. Shout out to you for taking the time to think it through. I wouldn't be so understanding. I respect you, though. I respect you, though. It's not in your spirit. Mm -mm. Me, I am like that. I am euphoria. I am 616 in L.A. I am meet the grams. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you know. Like, no. Why? Why? Why would you do this, sir? Why nope. are you so trash? Nope. Sorry. Let's keep going because okay. I think it's long. Pause. Update. So everyone that told me last night that I couldn't wait to tell my sister was right. A little after 12 last night, I get a call from my sister and says that she has to tell me that my wife tried to begin an affair with her husband. Oh, hell to the no. So he tried to pin it on her. I told her that's not the case oh, and I will no. be right over. So I get on the phone, wake my mother and father, tell them what's going on, make Why? my younger brother tell him. My mom and dad head to my sisters to sit with their kids and my brother comes over to our house to sit with ours and my wife and I head over. You doing too much. Oh, no. So you, you about that talk. What is this? He yeah. likes the drama. He's not like that. But you know what? I, I'm not going to say he likes drama, honey. He's turning to his family for support. Think about it. He's not He's not bad. He One, it's after midnight. I'll be like, hey, 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 hey. I'm going to handle all that shit tomorrow. That fuck boy lying. But we'll talk about it tomorrow. But he gets his mom to watch their, her kids. He gets his brother to watch his kids. It's not bad. I just think the timing is okay. ridiculous. You should have sent a text, A. Hey, okay. Your husband is snakes, but whatever. Okay. My sister is out in the front porch with my brother-in-law when we get there. He looks beaten. He knows we have text and voicemail. I really don't know what he was hoping to accomplish. My wife gives my sister her phone. She sees the text, listens to the voicemails, and he starts sobbing before she can say anything. My brother-in-law is a firefighter, a big tough guy, so this is a scene. My sister is pretty tough. She tells him to stop it, pack a bag, and go. Right. She can't stand to look at him. There's more begging, but she has no patience for it. So my sister walks off with my wife. I see them hugging, so at least I feel like they are okay. They have actually been friends since college. I met my wife through my sister, huh. so they are tight. The thought of this wrecking her friendship had been weighing on me. This leaves me with my brother-in-law. He's broken, so I feel more sympathy than anger. Why he there? He didn't go get shit. He says he's sorry. He just couldn't help it. It's not hard to fall in love with my wife, so I get... No. I told you he was weak. I told Again. you. I told you. Again. Keep my wife's name out your you. fucking mouth. I told you. I told you he was weak. This is a weak man. 
Who the the poster yes. or the yes oh yes oh yes he eventually picks himself up and leaves so we are there all night my sister starts asking my wife why her husband would think any of this would work out he had to have some reason to believe that she felt the same way my sister says they hadn't been having problems everything has always been the way it's been my wife is crying at this point and says there's nothing you haven't seen she gives my sister her phone again and they read every text ever sent over the past two years nothing there my wife was just herself. She has a playful personality, and so does my brother-in-law, so they tease each other. She does the same to my mom and younger brother as well. The only thing she could think of was the moment in the kitchen this past weekend he referenced. They both went for the fridge at the same time, and they playfully jostled for who would get there first. He lets her win, but he reaches around her waist to get a beer slowly, and she did feel the way that he did it was a little inappropriate. I would have I would have led with that, but okay. Yeah. She says she should have called him out on it, but didn't want to make it a big thing. She no. feels maybe the fact that she didn't give him hope. My sister doesn't blame her, so at least that's good. Then my sister starts going through his MAC book to see what else she doesn't know about. She's angry and frantic at this point. She guesses the passwords, starts searching, and finds a lot of pictures of my wife on that computer. <gasps> they no. went back years and always isolated on just her. Oh, no. We had gone as couples to the Caribbean a few years earlier. My wife wore a bikini. She usually doesn't, but since it was adults only, she did. There were probably 50 of her in that bathing suit. So he's been secretly snapping oh, these you. for Trash. years. Trash. Does this now enter restraining order territory? This has taken a creepy turn. I'll update while I have more. And there is another third update. Stay locked in. Honey. Told you. Told you. I told you. I want to remind you mm -mm. of our first Valentine's Day as a married couple. We don't usually celebrate Valentine's Day, but me being the romantic I am and the cinephile that I am. Cinephile, meaning I like movies. Stop it. Oh. Wait, you didn't know that either? No, I remember the date. Oh, all I right. remember what happened. I remember how we celebrated. Casablanca was playing yeah. at, a, at an indie theater, and I said, you know, I've never seen it. Let's go. Yeah. We went and we saw Casablanca. Again, this is our first time seeing it. And there's a scene where old girl's husband says to Bogart, you know, he, he starts asking him some questions or something. And Bogart says, well, I think you better ask your wife. <laughs> and old boy says, come again? And Bogart doubles down. I think you better ask your wife. <laughs> and I lean over. To, it's a crowded theater. I lean over to my wife. And I say, if a motherfucker ever tells me I better ask my wife, it's going to be furniture moving. Oh, boy. It will be a damn problem. Oh, my god. So gosh. this dude's talking about, is this restraining order territory? This is a weak guy. And the other guy was trash. I told you that. I, I see. I that's why I go with my gut. Very beginning. Knock Screw all on that. your door four in the morning. It's just us and the guns. Why are no. you playing? I don't even. Restraining I don't, I don't order. even understand how you let that get out of control. I don't even know how to see how you let that from from the time that we was on speakerphone. From the time the wife called that no, they no, no. met. No, it was it when, was already too when much. When you say, I mean, I couldn't help it. You you gotta understand. Look at her. Look oh like, my. Fam, wait, drop, drop the pin. Creepers. Drop the location. Drop the location. What do you mean location? They're right next to each other. No, there was not there was a speakerphone. From then on, I don't need to talk to my sister. I don't like, yo, what are you talking about? Nah. And I am not preaching violence. I'm saying drop the location for a good conversation. Mm. <laughs> what are we talking about? There's still more. We're not even going to read any comments because this story is long. Let's get to it. Oh, shit. There are four updates. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. I'm going to read one more. Then you have to read this last long. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's go. I've shared with my wife many of your comments. It makes her feel better that virtually everyone here holds her blameless. It makes her feel better. So thank you. Unfortunately, the mess continues. My sister agreed to talk to her husband last night and let him explain. She puts my wife on FaceTime during this conversation, so there will be no lying. I'm listening in as well, off camera. See, I would have been the first one on the camera. Matter of fact, stop talking. Oh, my sister about? is also recording the whole thing. Why? Why are we talking? Why? What's going on? What is the legal case? I don't Why? Know. Why? This is too much. They, they, they like the drama too. Yeah, as I told you. Oh my God, me? You want to be? I told you. He admits he's been obsessed with my wife over the years. It started the day he met her. My wife and I were dating at the time, but he met my wife before he met me. Like I said, my wife and sister are longtime friends, and my sister wanted to introduce her boyfriend to her friends. He thought it was only physical for a while, but over time, he knew it was more. 
My sister nearly kicks him out right there, but listens a little more, and she eventually asks what made him think that my wife would leave me for him. He answers that there is obviously mutual attraction, and he figured it would begin as an affair, and then things would progress from there. Oh, he played the whole thing out. My wife and sister explode at that point. A lot of cussing, a lot of screaming. Phone call is over. My wife hangs up because at this point she is concerned for me. Why? You 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 type. I wasn't gonna say. I'm not gonna say the word I was gonna say. She's shaken and distraught. Assures me the attraction was one sided. I never thought it wasn't. Even if she did find him physically attractive, I know she would never act on it. She's just not the type. Early on in our relationship, she caught me admiring her as she was dressing. Asked if I liked what I saw before her face turned cold and told me never to fuck up or I'd never see it again. Oh. She meant it. She's serious. She's serious. Oh, so about he's that. scared. <laughs> I'm not, no comment. Anyway, <laughs> I knew my brother-in-law was a little cocky, but my God, I never knew he thought that highly of himself to be able to pull off something like this. I talked to my sister later on, and she is contacting the lawyer Monday to see what steps she can take to limit his exposure to her kids. Well, they're his kids. It's too. his kids. That's what I'm saying. As far as she is concerned, he is detached from reality. That's all I have for now. I'll update once the dust settles. Let's just get into this next update. This shit is too long. Why are he doing so many updates? Oh, shit. Small update. He made comments to me many times through the years that my wife was out of my league. I would just laugh and agree she is. I guess he thought his gamble was not so high. Risk. Bro. Oh. He's like, oh, I can handle that for you. (laughs) Little little live (laughs) person handle that. All right. This is the final update. You got to read this one. This shit too long for me. Final update. This is likely to be my final update as I don't see much more happening before this besides divorce proceedings. Thanks for all the comments. They have helped my wife with some of the guilt. Anyway, my brother-in-law returned home yesterday, not because my sister wants him back, but because she can't legally stop him. They are done. I think he realizes that now. The lawyer tells my sister that since my brother-in-law behavior over the past few days has been documented, there's a good chance she will be granted full custody. He doesn't seem to even want to fight her on that. My sister will be fine. Any love she had for him is gone, and she doesn't seem to be broken up about it. The kids don't know what, what? happened yet, but my brother-in-law has never was never around much anyway when the kids what? were home. He slept at the fire station many nights and put it in a lot of overtime, but it is certain to be hard on them since once they know what's going on. Many commenters have said that there must be more women But as far as we can tell, there hasn't been. It's really just the obsession with my wife. She has blocked his phone, but on the same night he returned home, he sends my wife an email from an account he just made. It started with an apology, but then took a turn. He said he never got to finish at the restaurant that day. God damn. Then went on for paragraphs and paragraphs about all the things he loves about my wife and the desperation he felt that led him to do what he did. What? He mentioned their mutual attraction again and the sexual tension that he always felt was between them. Get, get. And ended with a rather le- large section about me. Let's just say I didn't know he had such a low opinion of me. He was quite certain that I was not satisfying my wife Whoa. properly. <laughs> anyway, we sent the email to my sister and it will go to the lawyer. It may be, it might be the enough to get him removed from the house. Finally, my wife isn't great, but she's doing better every day. She does blame herself for being too comfortable around my brother-in-law. She's always careful to set boundaries with other men. In case you haven't figured it out already, my wife is pretty stunning and gets a lot of male attention. But with my brother-in-law, she felt safe to be herself since he was family. Surely no lines would have been crossed. She and my sister are cool, and there doesn't appear to be any resentment, so that makes me happy. We will all be okay. It will just take time. Thanks to all who have commented and voiced their support. You got to see this dude. I don't care if you're a firefighter. <laughs> you got to see this dude. All that legal talk. I mean, yeah, do the legal thing. Be healthy, of course. Remember, I said I said from the, the first story, I gave the healthy therapist answer. No. I said I was done. You got to see this dude. No. An uh, email? You after the fact, after all this shit that happened, you go. You have the audacity to write an email, and yeah, no, I would have. 
I would have gotten a restraining order for real. You don't know what kind of mind frame that that guy is in. His wife, the original poster's wife, needs a restraining order. Yes. Like big, 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 yes. big facts. That would have already been done. And you. And he might lose his job. I don't. That you don't know what's going on with him. No. Uh. Uh-uh. I don't even know if he has a job. Well, they say he slept at the fire station. No, nope. that just means he didn't sleep there. That's true. I don't know. All I know is not. That's not. That's not healthy. That's not healthy at all. That's a problem. That guy's a problem. After all that stuff, and you know this that is he, so obviously crazy. I don't. Yeah. We don't really have to discuss much of it. Like that no. news all. Yeah. Something's Let's off. talk to original poster though. Something what should he have done? Too. Something wrong with him too. A lot of people don't want no problem. No, he's soft. Which is okay. So that's certain people's personality. They I don't want any problems. No. I don't want problems. No. But the but, but well, you, he you needs should, to. But you can't be letting people disrespect but the, you. The problem is at the door, and you're saying no, no, no. Still, I don't want a problem. No. I don't want a problem. I don't want a problem. No, he, that was blatant disrespect. This is what they're gonna though. do. This is what they're gonna do. They're gonna drop push-ups. They're gonna drop tailor made. And you keep giving them chances. Please don't do this. And then you gotta just meet the grams. And if you know. You know. You know how you have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. I do. There's an international war between Compton and Toronto right now. I I I I, I last I, night it got lit. Anyway. Original poster. You gotta you gotta have more pride in yourself, bro. Like usually I tell people have a little less ego. You you might need a little more ego because ain't no way. Just some. Ain't no way. Yeah, Ain't like, no way. I didn't think he thought so low of me. It's like, what? Huh? He told you to your face. Your wife's out of your league. Like, how many times? But you remember what I told you I did this week? Something the old boy said it. Okay. Yeah. Old boy said it. Yeah. Okay. Old boy said it. Hey, why you keep saying that, my guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Like, what you mean by that? Uh-huh. Nah. Like, like, what is what do you really mean? No, 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 but really, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't understand that one at all. But did you sound? Is that how that would have worked too? Can't Why did imagine. these people get married? I can't even imagine. Why? I think we should do a, a regular. I just had this one. I didn't make this. I'm just making this one up. We should regularly do a why did I get married checked in check in because I know I got married. Yeah. Because I'm in love with my best friend. <laughs> but why do these people get married? I mean, I damn. Know. I don't know. I feel bad for the sister too. They seem like she was completely blindsided. They were all blindsided. Yeah. This dude is big trash. Creep. Do we have a relationship podcast? I feel like we only talk about relationships. I don't know. I don't know how to classify it. Hmm. You don't know what it is yet? No. I think it's evolving. So, Are you going to rock the merch? Absolutely. Should they watch the reaction show? Absolutely. Coming in June. We've already recorded two episodes. So... Mm. Thank y'all for checking in with us. I don't. Do you have a sum up for this? Nope. Know who you're getting married to. Go to premarital counseling. Yeah, it's not going to get better just because you yeah. said I do, and there's yeah. some rings involved. Because how did you not know your wife doesn't like sex unless it's for children? Yeah. Conversations. A yeah. conversation can save a lot of these things. Not necessarily. Can't save you from your husband being obsessed with your sister-in-law. That's. that's because he would have lied about that. But some of these things, it's just talking. Go to premarital counseling. I already told you all psychology today. I mean, I guess they could also get some relationship coaching from Robert Sawyer Co. Your boy. Uh, we'll talk about that another day, though. Only black kids, at only black kids on all socials. Lock in with us. Check us out. Are we going live one day? Maybe. Maybe we don't. That's not it. One day we. It's a lot Maybe. going on. Um, that's it. No, that's not it. That's it. Please send your emails. Send us more. Ask the black kids. We love it. We need it. We thrive on it. What is it? Ask the black kids at gmail.com. Now that's you can it. say it. Well, now. Bye. What, what, now, okay. Three, two, one. Bye. Wow.